Good morning. This is the first video for the Iron Gate, which Meyer says is just the crossed guard, which is essentially the crossed arm and hanging guard carried a bit lower. So we'll look at the play and then how we practice it. So for the Iron Gate, as I have said before, this Iron Gate is actually the cross guard. Fight from it thus. If your opponent cuts at you from above, then go up with crossed hands and catch his cut on the forte of your blade. When he takes his sword away from your blade after this cut, then cut powerfully at his arms with low cuts while he is pulling his arm upward. As soon as he falls downward, then attack his head. So the last few weeks we've been working on the hanging guard, which Meyer shows as an uncrossed guard. Uh, and then we do talk about a crossed arm hanging guard, not as a place to fight out of, but as a transitionary movement. But Meyer is telling us that we carry this a bit lower when you look at his description of the cross guard, and this is what he's calling his iron gate. So we have kind of the high uncrossed, and then we have the low crossed, and that's where we're working from in the iron gate. So what Meyer says is if we're in this position, when they cut at our head, we're going to raise our hands and catch the cut on the forte of the blade. As soon as they pull back to go to their next cut, what we're going to do is we're going to throw undercuts at their arms, and then if they come down to defend that, we're going to roll over and cut them in the head. So the shorthand for this one is cross guard, raise the block, undercuts at the arms, come down onto the head. So the nice thing is it's a pretty short play. It's it, pretty simple, but it, it lends itself really nicely to a good flow drill on the Pell, particularly because I have found as people are coming up from this crossed hanging position, which we end up in if we raise our hands, people often find undercuts to be more awkward coming out of that. So this is a really good motion to practice just so that you can get used to throwing all the angles from these hanging guard positions. So I think it's very common we see to either side you know, we raise up into a hanging guard and we overcut, and we raise up to a hanging guard and we overcut, and that's great. And it's definitely a drill we should be working on. But now we're being introduced to the idea of cutting underneath from this these hanging guard positions. And he's specifically giving us the cross one, but I would practice being comfortable throwing undercuts from either hanging position. So one more time to give you the, the kind of mental shorthand. Cross guard. Raise the block, undercuts, if they come down, roll over onto the head. So for the Pell, this is actually really, really nice. You can kind of get into range in this, this low, and then we're going to raise the parry, undercut, undercut, overcut. You can mess with the pattern, he, but Meyer says do some undercuts. So if we think about we're cutting up into somebody's arms, as they're raising to come down, we want to make sure that we're, we're kind of matching our footwork. Meyer doesn't talk about the footwork, but if I have an opponent that is crowded onto me a little bit and throwing a cut, and they're raising, I know I'm going to want to get off the line a little bit, both to protect my head in case they kind of bring their arms down through my cut, and also because I want to make sure I have a good structure and not just relying on like an angle. So I like to have this a little bit motion. And if the person, as they're raising, comes down, because they want to defend themselves and they can hit my sword down, that of course is recreating the, the upper opening. So when I'm practicing this on the Pell, I definitely do a little offline footwork with all of my cuts. And you can practice messing with the pattern. So maybe we do the raise, we'll throw a couple undercuts, and we could certainly back edge. We could throw a couple undercuts, I throw a lead edge. We could do a singular undercut and a back edge, a singular undercut, and a front edge. So you can play with the pattern, but I think the, the important things is that we're raising up to defend, and then we're gonna cut underneath. We're gonna chase them in as they're kind of retracting to uh, cut. We're gonna inhabit that space with the blade. And then if they fall down on that to defend, we're gonna hit the opening above that they've just created for us. So again, not a super long play, not even really a complicated set of movements, but there's some good mechanics in there, and it's a really nice, flowy play to practice on the Pell, so mess with that, and we'll talk, uh, take a look at the next one next week.